I would call the uh, City of Clear Lake Shores uh, City Council regular meeting on August 6, 2019 at 6.30 to order. We have one council, one woman absent, uh, Councilwoman Terrell, which is excused. Now we'll go ahead and pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and the Texas flag. All right, next is uh, council reports from council, Councilman Thompson. I currently have nothing to report at this time. All right, thank you, Councilwoman Lyons. Uh, nothing to report at this time either. Copy that. And Councilwoman Bailey. I don't have anything, thank you. All right, and Councilwoman Fenwick. Thank you, Mayor, I have a couple items. Oh, sorry, thank you, Mayor, I have a couple items this evening. Uh, first of all, um, the Clear Creek Education Foundation announced today that their Dine Out to Donate event is going to be on October 7th. Um, I have a list here of the restaurants that will be participating in that event. There are a couple that are within Clear Lake Shores. So I encourage um, everybody to go out to dinner on Monday, October 7th. Let those restaurants know that, they're, that you're there in support of the Clear Creek Education Foundation and then they will um, ask you to pick a school. I encourage you to choose Stewart or Bayside or Falls as that's where our um, our students are zoned to and then they will make a donation um, to those schools and to the foundation uh, for, for you eating dinner out. So um, this will be on the, the city's Facebook page as well. Um, and then if anybody wants to look at the flyer after the meeting, I have it. Uh, the second item that I have is um, many of you may or may not know that the Texas Windstorm Insurance Association had um, a meeting today down in Galveston, their board of directors, they considered uh, we're considering um, another rate hike for windstorm insurance. I'm happy to report that that did not happen. Um, many, I watched the, the board meeting this morning from Galveston. Many of our elected officials, um, including uh, Commissioner Giese, Giese, is that how you say his last name? Joe from, from Galveston County, Mays Middleton was there. Um, there's a lot of citizens and business owners that spoke up and gave public comment as to um, why the, the TWIA board should not increase rates, um, especially for those uh, who li still live down in the Port Aransas and Corpus areas and Beaumont areas that are recovering from Harvey and, and in this area as well. So um, no rate increase for 2020 for Texas Windstorm Insurance. So that's a win for us. Um, and then we'll discuss the other agenda item with regards to the Grand Parkway um, later on. So that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Fenwick. I just have a couple things. Uh, I did meet with the Bay Area Houston Economic Partnership, BAYHEP, um, with uh, several of the state legislators, consisting of Senator Taylor, Representatives Greg Bonin, Dennis Paul, and Mays Middleton. Uh, we primarily discussed on what they're doing to the, our cities in the local area up in Austin. It seems like they're really affecting us. And, it ended up being a very enlightening meeting in the fact that they do like us writing into them individually and uh, doing stuff through TML is not necessarily the, the common good cause for us because it affects different cities different ways. So we need to think about in the future. And then, uh, and then implicitly uh, for Clear Lake Shores, um, I wouldn't say all the bills affected us. Uh, there was one HB 3535 with the uh, right away and utility tax that hits us pretty good with about eight or ten K of uh, revenue so we got to be careful there um, also Galveston EMS we uh, received another proposal from them for the interlocal agreement uh, also hopefully bringing that back to council at the next meeting and we continue to work the details for the uh, chemo ambulance uh, we also received uh, the recommendation for the boat ramp from Angie and we'll be putting the ordinance changes to go and running those past the attorney. Uh, great turnout to Sinatra night, uh, steak night. Kudos to Rick and Sam for putting that together. I had 55 people attend. I heard it was a, a blast. And then lastly, just to everybody to know the citizens, Clear Lake Road. We actually already have some stuff turned in for the uh, street signs being replaced and we're looking at possibly making that a blinking yellow light. And, and so mm -hmm. you can turn left on yellow. <laughs> um, so hopefully let me know if anybody's against that. I'm thinking everybody's for it. Yeah. <laughs>
If anybody has any issues, please let me know because I haven't heard of any. And then other than that, we also counsel on EDC Meta's uh, strategic planning, and uh, we're moving forward with that. And Ron Cox will be bringing back the results from those meetings. And that's it. Uh, staff reports, Police Department Chief Cook. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Chief Cook says it's out of town uh, in a conference up in Frisco, so he asked me to step in for him this evening. Uh, for the month of July, um, we answered a total of 579 calls for service, completed 2,075 business checks, 162 residential checks. We had a, an additional 17 bar checks. Um, <coughs> cumulatively, we had a total of 63 arrests. I broke those down into classifications. We had 11 charges for driving under the influence, uh, 10 charges which were narcotics related. Uh, one of our officers on night shift recovered some people, a stolen vehicle and the occupants in it. And then we had two parole board warrants where somebody was missing these gentlemen from PDC. So they're on the way back. We had uh, only one theft for the last month. And uh, cumulatively, we had 273 traffic contacts. Thank you, Captain Thank you. Gist. Sorry. All right, building official Kevin Harrell, please. Mayor, Council. Um, from our last meeting, I've issued 16 permits. Of those 16 permits, uh, I have a new construction, new home at 203 Pine. I'm currently reviewing a new remodel of the Target, both exterior and <coughs> interior, uh, to the tune of $3.5 million. I did discuss uh, with the contractor this morning about McDonald's. Uh, They're hoping to get plans into me before the 15th of August. Uh, 822 Clear Lake Road is currently under construction interior uh, for a new business. Stewart Elementary, they should be, be <coughs> they should be issued a CO very soon. They're almost completely finished. They just have to do a, a fire alarm uh, walkthrough with the deputy fire marshal. Uh, we have a new business at True North Marine is in the old uh, Starship Marina at 1205 uh, Marina Bay. As for code enforcement, I currently have eight open cases all junk boats. Uh, that's all I have. Kevin, what's the new business at 822 Clear Lake Road? It is a uh, art gallery okay. and tea shop. Okay. Thank they you. They will be serving coffee and tea and pastries. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Harrell. Fire Chief Brent Hahn. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Just real quick to piggyback on Kevin's report, uh, the target, they, they brought over uh, several plans, quite thick and quite heavy. We working on target with their extension and uh, reconstruction there. Working with Stewart Elementary also to get all the final inspections done before school starts. I uh, want to caution everybody about the heat out there. Quite a few heat index uh, warnings that have been going on and no further reports from the target. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. City Administrator Brent Spear. Good evening. Uh, try to make this quick. Uh, I've been reviewing streets in anticipation of crack ceiling, uh, pavement, trying to provide for uh, more longevity. Uh, also been checking on our parks uh, and pools and parks. Uh, we have had a couple of challenges with the pool. One of them was that uh, we had some, I think we had five uh, uh, maybe preteen youth jump over the top while it was locked and uh, went swimming and so the police were notified they came over identified the five involved and uh, none of them have pool memberships that I can find in our records so I'll be taking that up with their parents and uh, making them aware um, also uh, we have five of the seven underwater pool lights that are out I've scheduled that for repair with uh, Gulf Coast Aquatics it's about $500 to do that huge assets and uh, lamps. Uh, the boat ramp parking committee, uh, that ad hoc committee worked so hard, um, really is uh, 
they kind of attacked that parking issue and they also kind of got into the boat ramp side of it and uh, looking at possible grants with GLO. Uh, the, the thing that I found out most interesting today is that uh, the boat ramp that we thought was crumbling away and creating a hole with scouring does not appear that that's the case. Um, the boat ramp appears to be in good shape, however, the top of it has been silted over because of traffic and, and its location to the channel turn where um, you know, boats come in and make, make the turn. So large boats are displacing a lot of silt and it has to circle around and with the tide coming in and out it has to go somewhere. So that's where it falls out. The uh, boat ramp there we have uh, measured today or when they went out there, I can't tell you what day it was, but when they were out there and they were inspecting that, uh, Jay Fenwick went out there and, and measured with sonar five feet to the to the ramp and then a couple feet over he lost two feet of depth and it was silt and sand and he could crank up his sonar to go deeper and hit something more dense and the uh, ramp was still in, uh, appeared to be fine but it was underneath all of that mud. Uh, around that boat ramp on that day in the pier he was getting depths in anywhere from a foot and a half to about three feet. Um, it's about five feet deep from the edge of that ramp out to the channel, and the channel itself is 16 feet deep. So uh, he's going to, I gave him one of the drawings of the boat ramp. He's going to go out and mark uh, certain areas and, and take a little more time and just uh, you know mark down what those depths are so we can get an idea. But it appears instead of having to replace the entire boat ramp that maybe stretching would would assist us in that. So uh, I think that's uh, that's awesome. Um, he's gonna he, he will get those back to me. I'm guessing pretty quickly, but uh, we'll say by the next meeting that we have some numbers. Um, also regarding the park park or the, excuse me the parking that's located at the boat ramp and the rules of the ramp that committee has made their suggested changes to the ordinances. Uh, I reviewed them and I've sent them off to the city attorney for review. So we should have some resolution uh, or at least recommendation at the next uh, meeting. With uh, EDC, uh, Clear Lake Road uh, parking lot, which is out on 2094, that is uh, nearing completion. Uh, they anticipate to have that done within about five working days. Um, they've got about 50 dump truck loads of dirt and uh, grindings they need to move and get out of the way. And they're bringing in new ones from uh, new reclaimed um, from the processing plant. Those will be finally compacted and the surface will be installed. Uh, that's also dependent on weather, but it looks like we're going to have good weather. And we're also scheduling our first grant payment uh, as part of that 380 agreement with True North. Uh, that's for work that's already been completed at their new location, and they have submitted a plan for the project and estimated the costs, which was part of that agreement. So I've been working with them. City Hall, I think since our last meeting, the Willie, Nos Willie Nelson houseboat's been moved. Uh, don't know where it went, but it <laughs> left city limits. So uh, we're happy about that. Uh, of course, City Council and EDC has a combined workshop, and Ron Cox and I will be working on some follow-up points for that. I did locate a city drainage easement with a deteriorating bulkhead, uh, virtually uh, invisible uh, to the public, but the people that live on uh, Tyndall and look across that little canal can see it, and uh, yeah, it's falling apart. Um, property owners are doing a good job to take care of theirs, but the city's been remiss. And taken care of ours. So we're getting quotes on that to get that fixed. It's starting to collapse in and we want to make sure we uh, maintain that in good condition. Uh, there is a copy of the cancellation letter to Clemson that's in the packet that was sent after the last meeting. On Thursday I plan on meeting with GLO at uh, Texas City and some other municipalities regarding hurricane recovery. Um, they're going to have uh, some top-down folks from Austin there so it'll be a good opportunity to hopefully uh, press the flesh and, and put some names and uh, uh, business cards in their hands and um, hopefully make a good impression. On waterfront leases, we are uh, approximately $9,000 behind on collecting those on that, those lease payments. Uh, the letters were sent out today. And I think in the future, and speaking with staff, that in order to uh, kind of the processes that we you know, we send them an invoice and then we follow up with this letter and Eventually, uh, once it gets posted on an agenda, then that seems to get their attention. Oh, 
who's my lead, going to come in and pay it. So uh, maybe in an effort to get more response, it would be uh, you know, it's a, an advantage to the city to possibly look at, at having some type of a penalty system, whatever it is, 5 or 10% after a due date. Um, maybe that will motivate them. But there is a lot of cost associated with sending certified letters and generating all that paperwork and, and sending it out. It is important to, to our residents to have those waterfront leases, and we want them to have that so they can enjoy the lake and, and surrounding water, but, but uh, we just need to find a way to hopefully motivate them to be more timely with those payments. Uh, started with the process of budgeting. We, I do have uh, pr the proposed budgets uh, turned in from the police department, uh, from building official. I'm also working with Cheryl and Christy on theirs, and uh, we're waiting through the other thing committee ones as well. We will have a, uh, a budget workshop August 20th. That's part of our uh, part of the plan as I've rolled it out. And I've had feedback from one elected official and uh, I encourage you if you have any suggestions or wants, needs, desires, uh, go ahead and get those to me and see if we can accommodate those. August 23rd, it's not necessarily a city sponsored event, but uh, we're going to have a there's going to be a blood drive in honor of uh, Terry Kelly, who's undergoing cancer treatment, and uh, it's with MD Anderson. And they will be uh, on site at Clear Lake Road, that brand new parking lot that you'll be in, and uh, across the street from Okies. Okies is going to donate some, I guess, adult door prizes. <laughs> uh, so I guess if you're one of top 40, uh, 21 years of age or older, then uh, you probably can get a refreshment of your choice or whatever they have going on. More information will be pushed out over our Facebook, but we won't put that on our city website. Um, August 31st, I remind you of this coffee with Mayor Kurt. That's going to be at 9 o'clock here at the clubhouse. Um, and I think that's it, except for my agenda item. And just to add that to that with the uh, Brent, with the uh, coffee with the mayor, the council may be there. It may be in quorum, and we'll have a public announcement of that. No decisions will be made at that meeting. We'll, we will also post that as a possible opportunity for a forum. Thank you. Thank you, Brent. All right. Uh, scheduled visitors, Felix Flores is unable to make it tonight, but he's with the Galveston County Council of Precinct 1 candidate. And item number six is public comments. Having none, we'll move on to new business number seven, consent agenda, A through D. A being check register 627, 19 through 7, 10, 2019. B, waterfront transfer of B043A, Rebecca Oliver to Arthur Olson. C, council meeting minutes 7, 16, 2019. And D, city council EDC joint workshop minutes 7, 26, 2019. I'll make a motion to approve consent agenda mm -hmm. A through D. I'll second. Lions make a motion. Fenwick second. Any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. All right, number eight, council business discussion of possible action may be taken on the following items. Item A. Resolution 2019-15 is a resolution of the City of Clear Lake Shores, Texas, finding that Center Point Energy Houston Electric LLC's requested increase to its electric transmission and distribution rates and charges within the city should be denied, finding that the city's reasonable rate case expenses shall be reimbursed by the, by the company, finding that the meeting at which this resolution passed is open to the public as regular by law, requiring notice of this re resolution to the company and legal counsel. And uh, basically a couple of months ago we did a 60 day um, denial of that to the company and this just uh, finalizes that action. I'll move to approve resolution 2019-15. I'll second. And I have a question, Brent, this has been vetted through our city attorney. Has this resolution? Right? Any further discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. All 
All right, item B, resolution 2019-16, a resolution requesting that the Texas Transportation Commission take action to include segment B of the State Highway 99 Grand Parkway in the 2020 Unified Transportation Plan and take action to complete the traffic revenue study, land acquisition, design, and construction activities. And what this comes about as part of the uh, original Ike and Harvey, there's funds that were laid out for doing all the segments and like typical things, a lot of the stuff on the north was has been either underway or completed and now they were looking at removing this. Um, so this is to tell the lawmakers in Austin to keep this on the books. Uh, I'll move to approve resolution 2019-16. I will second that. Um, I do want to say for everybody that's out there in the public, there is a comment period that's open through August 12th, so that's next Monday. Um, I don't have the email with me, but I can get it for you if you're interested in offering comment to um, the Texas uh, Transportation Commission on whether or not you agree or disagree with this. Hopefully you do agree um, that you want them to fund this. It, it will end up serving, helping Galveston County and serving as an evacuation route. Um, not if, but when um, the next hurricane comes. So um, if you're interested in, in providing public comment, let me know and I'll, I'll send you that email address. Thank you, Ms. Wendley. So any more discussion? Having none, all in favor? Unanimous, motion passed. And item C, approved demolition contractor for 311 Narcissus. And Brent Spear has some stuff on this, or Kevin Harrell. I have the real high. I have the real high flyover summary of this. Uh, 311 Narcissus has been a problem property. It uh, needs to be torn down. Efforts have been made, and I think on your packet, the uh, registered mails has been sent to locate that owner or the responsible party. But we have three. Uh, demolition quotes uh, from three different vendors. They were in your packet as well. And, uh, you know, they range uh, basically from about $7,000 up to $20,000. And I'll let, Kevin's one that handled that, uh, kind of the details on this and see if he has a recommendation. Mayor and Council, um, in looking at these estimates, uh, these are all contractors that have done previous demolitions on the island. Uh, I did select two others, but they did not respond. Uh, as for recommendation, um, our last demo that was done recently was done by JRP uh, Demolition. They are, their bid is currently at $9,860.88. Uh, JTB Services, which is low bid, uh, they came in at um, $6,790.41 and 41 cents and, uh, excuse me, 25 cents. Um, I would probably recommend the low bidder. Uh, they've, they've done plenty of jobs here on the island and I've had no complaints. Yes, 6290 plus the tree, which is, there's a tree in the middle which is dying. That's $500 plus $41.25. So. Thank you. He is correct. Okay. And that Motion. includes removing everything off that lot. These quotes were to action. basically yeah. clean the lot entirely of the concrete, the trees, all of it. It would be a blank lot once they're done. Uh, the reason I asked for that is for the city to, we really do not have, other than two maintenance gentlemen on, on our staff, and it was just a lot for them to mow the yard. So that's why we're asking it completely cleared away. So it includes the piers that's down correct. two feet into the ground. Feet. Yes. Yes, it's, uh, the city administrator asked me if it was a final level or a rough level. It is just a rough level. Once 
somebody comes interested in the property, they can obviously grade it properly. And <coughs> Well, we'd be sending a notice letter to the adjacent properties to make sure they know about the demolition. Yes, and, we will. and then also it says that you need to have water available for them. That's correct. So you'll have that available for them? Yes. And we have to disconnect all the services. Currently, the electric is disconnected. Yeah, I've contacted the center point on the gas. Uh, they informed me that it would take about six weeks to disconnect the meter and remove the piping. Okay. The plumbing they will do on site as the most So yeah. we're looking at another six weeks before it can be demoed because we're going to have to wait on the gas? Yes, we are looking Safety at six issues. weeks because center point has to come in and remove the meter and remove the pipe that comes into the meter and cap it. How how does the city recoup this money, this $6,800 that we're going to spend to demo this property? We're, we file a lien on the property. So when the property sells, sold, then we sold get it. at least that and we Kay. get that. Right. That's correct. Kay. Plus whatever the banks Kay. have on it. Yep. Council, any further discussion? Chuck? Can you have a grab a mic, please? I'm Charles Sorry. <laughs> well, everything's recorded. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Can you hear me? Okay, I'm Charles Dillon. I live at 218 Narcissus Road. And just as an FYI, there's a fair amount of invasive bamboo on that lot. And it's going to be problematic to make it not come back. The depth of dig is three plus feet to remove an invasive bamboo if you don't use poison. Just FYI. Thank you, Chuck. Any motion? I'll make a motion to approve demolition and with the lowest bid contractor at the 6831.25 amount. I'll second it. All right. Ms. Bailey made a motion, slide in second. All in favor? Unanimous. Passed. All right, item D, employee policy manual 1.E.4, personal appearance of employees, change regarding tattoos and body art. And Mr. Brent Spear has this. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, after I explained it last month, I'll bring you up to speed, but we have uh, employees that are in violation of this policy. It was written a long time ago. It, was, uh, it said uh, basically it couldn't have any tattoos visible that were over two inches in size. Depending on what shirt I wear and how I move, uh, I'm in violation. We have other, uh, other employees that are in violation. So. Uh, there's been changes globally in how uh, people view tattoos uh, and I would make the recommendation I submitted a red line proposal to you in, in your packet um, I was going to scratch the first sentence I had I was overthinking that but uh, I was going to take that out from at no time while on duty working and representing the city of Clear Lake Shores and official capacity shall any strike that and just add the word no. No offensive tattoo or body art shall be visible. And then it gives the examples of offensive tattoos, including but not limited to those that exhibit or advocate discrimination against sex, race, religion, mm -hmm. ethnicity, national origin, sexual orientation, age, physical or mental disability, medical conditions, or marital status, or those that dis uh, exhibit gang, supremacist, or extremist group affiliations, and those that depict or promote drug use sexually explicit acts or other obscene material. Kind of like a huge thing you have to identify, but uh, the goal is to, uh, you know, if, if something is not, doesn't fit into those categories, is not offensive, uh, of course anybody can be offended by anyone. I'm sure that 
a, uh, an American flag on someone's forearm could be offensive to someone else. But uh, I think we have the ability uh, within ourselves to help govern that. And if, if there was ever a question of that, I think it should start with the supervisor of that person to make a determination. And then they can go up the, they can go up the chain. They can go to me, they can go to the mayor. And if we wanted to add an extra layer, uh, it could go to council for his authority. But uh, I just think it's, it's something that will, uh, we have police officers that are wearing long sleeves year-round because uh, they're in violation and they don't want to be in trouble. So. In your research, did you find this comparable to other cities? It is very comparable now. It was not, uh, it was not comparable five years ago. Um, and with my, the agency that I came from for 23 years, uh, you know, we had people that were tattooed on their arm and they had to wear coverings. Thank you, Vigo County Sheriff's Office, and beyond. <laughs> and Captain Gist, you're, it's all. Uh, no. no comment, or it's all good. Okay. 